Well, it does show that we're live, so I'm taking that off just because I'll be up here and not around anybody. Uh, morning. Welcome to Divine Peace Church, to live stream, to those that are here with us. Thanks for uh, following the guidelines and uh, pray that God blesses our worship this morning here or uh, online. We'll begin with an opening song. Again, I'll step aside so you can see the, the joyous empty cross, and then we'll go ahead and start our worship service. Again, welcome to Divine Peace Church, to the live stream. Welcome to those who are with us in person. It is the fourth Sunday of Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. So the sermon will focus on Jesus as our Good Shepherd. The sermon will be based on our reading from John chapter 10. And the theme is Follow the Voice of the Shepherd for Life. We'll begin by singing and opening hymn together, hymn 399, To God Be the Glory.
Begin with our greeting from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, especially for the kids out there, it's time to pray. So I'll ask you to stop, drop your heads, and fold your hands. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Good Shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm for today, a fitting psalm uh, for Good Shepherd Sunday and for the times that we are in is Psalm 23. Reminder that God is there for us and he cares for us. We have that wonderful uh, promised land of heaven that we're looking forward to. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading for the day comes from our Gospel reading from John chapter 10. I'll give you a moment if you're looking for a Bible and you want to look this up and follow along with us, or if you're following along in the bulletin that was sent through the email, or for those of you gathered with us, let's stand for the gospel. Again, this is John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in, go out, and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. 
This time we'll join together to sing the next hymn, hymn 374, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. Begin with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Congratulations. You've gone viral. Before a couple months ago, everybody that heard that would think, oh, that's a great thing. Today, you've got to be careful, though, if you say somebody's gone viral. You have to qualify that and say, Congratulations, you've gone viral on social media. That's a good thing. But if you tell somebody they've gone viral with the coronavirus, it's not a good thing. You've seen a lot of people throughout your life that have gone viral. People who were just known by a couple of friends and family members, then overnight they become a name that's recognized nationally. Or they may even get worldwide fame. People go viral because of their talents. They post a video of them singing, or they even have videos of these guys that are able to take a stack of plastic cups, they'll stack them up really fast, and they'll stack them down really fast, and it's amazing. You can see how they go viral. Then there are people that go viral that don't have any talent. Um, there's viral videos of people that are walking down the aisle for their wedding, or they're walking across the stage for graduation, and they fall, and they go viral. Uh, again, it's not for talent. Uh, but the people like to watch them fall. 
Once a person goes viral on social media or however they go viral, they get followers. Followers are people who have seen someone do something and they follow them. That way, if that person does something else, uh, they'll be able to see it again. Whether it's something uh, in video, in print, even just a sound bite, people get followers. Some of you may be hoping to go viral. Some of you may want a whole bunch of followers. And we want followers for all different kinds of reasons. Some people want to get followers because they want to help people. Some people want followers just for fame and fortune. Uh, some people want followers to make people laugh. Whether you want followers or not, uh, you are a follower. You may have never thought of yourself as somebody who is a follower. And again, you don't have to follow people on social media. You don't even have to have a social media account or a smartphone to be a follower. We follow people in all different kinds of ways. You can follow your favorite author by reading all of their books. You can follow somebody uh, by always watching them on the news or on a talk show. You can follow your favorite songwriter by listening to all of the songs that they sing or somebody else sings for them. Your favorite director by seeing all of their movies. Uh, you can even follow family and friends. Someone who has great stories or always gives you good advice. At the end of the day, we all follow somebody. So it's important to know what reasons we have for following somebody. Your list for following somebody is going to be different than almost everybody else. Some people follow others because they just want to laugh. They've had a stressful day and they just want to relax at the end of the day, so they want to see something funny. You may follow somebody because they're a leader in your industry. You follow them because you hope it'll let you get more clients or maybe by watching them you'll be able to follow processes in a better way at your company, be more effective, be more efficient, maybe even make some more money. Some of you follow parenting blogs because somehow you lost that uh, owner's manual that was supposed to be delivered to you at the same time as your child was delivered. Maybe you follow somebody for health reasons. You follow them and they encourage you to work out or they encourage you in good things to eat, how to take care of your body. You and I have lots of reasons for following someone. Those reasons mix together. The silly mixes with the serious. The parodies mix with the practical. We've all got different reasons for following someone. And we follow all different kinds of people. So can anybody ever tell us that there's one person that all of us need to follow. Yes, there is one person that all of us need to follow. We've all got our own list and that's fine, but Jesus needs to make everyone's list. Jesus needs to be on your list. You need to follow him because of Jesus' words in John chapter 10. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Those who we follow bring some kind of a benefit to our lives. Whether you realize it or not, those that, that you follow satisfy some kind of need in your life. Jesus satisfies your need to be saved. And you need to be saved from your tendency to follow. Again, all of us follow somebody. Even if you're someone who says, well, I don't follow anybody. Well, you're following yourself and you're somebody, so yeah, everybody follows someone. From birth, you and I began our lives following somebody. We're like sheep in that way. Sheep follow. If sheep grow up with a shepherd, they learn to recognize that shepherd's voice and they trust that shepherd to lead them to safe places to satisfy their hunger, their thirst. Sheep trust only their shepherd's voice. If somebody else comes in and tries to pretend to be their shepherd, the sheep won't follow them. In fact, they'll run away. You and I have always followed a shepherd. It's been in our lives, even before we were born, from the time we were conceived, we followed one shepherd, listened to the voice, listened wherever that voice told us to go, do whatever that voice told us to do. That shepherd 
It was the devil. David reminds us that even before we were born, we have been following sin. It's in our hearts. In Psalm 51, he says, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Conceived in sin, we hopelessly follow the devil down whatever path he wants us to go. We were lost in that. Isaiah also speaks of our helplessness. Sheep that run around following whatever path our sinful hearts want. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. Following our own sinful hearts, following the devil, means that our lives need saving. And Isaiah revealed who that would be. Not just a shepherd, but the shepherd. The shepherd that gave his life for the sheep, the shepherd that protects the lives of his sheep. He spoke of Jesus. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the sins, the failed followings of us all. And he has forgiven us and saved us through Jesus. God made the list of criteria for who we are to follow simple. The list begins and the list ends with someone who can save you. In 1 Peter 2, God gave these words to Peter showing us it is Jesus who we are to follow. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Some of the reasons you and I follow people are to get better at things in our lives. We want to laugh more, we want to eat better, we want to be better at our jobs, be better parents. But there's nobody that we can follow to make us better, good at, or even able to overcome our sins. We cannot save ourselves from sin, from death, from the devil. We need Jesus. Jesus stood between you and God. He took the punishment for you. Jesus has saved you. Through Jesus, you have life. You have eternal life waiting for you in heaven. Through Jesus, all of your wounds have been healed. The wounds inflicted on your soul by sin that leave you feeling guilty and fearful before God. Guilty and fearful inside every day. It's Jesus' blood. It's Jesus' good and perfect life that covered over all of those wounds inflicted by sin. All the stumbling down paths of sin and temptation. Jesus is the one who leads you to those cool and quiet waters. Who stands between you and God so that you can stand there at peace and with joy. As a follower of Jesus, you are a precious prize. A precious prize to Jesus, but also a precious prize to bad shepherds. See, Jesus has rescued you from that lost flock. Now you're a part of his saved flock. Jesus has opened your eyes to see his green pastures of forgiveness. Like a hungry and thirsty sheep who eyes are opened by a shepherd to rolling hills filled with green grass and cool waters, Jesus has satisfied your soul. You're saved, but you have not yet reached those green pastures of heaven. You're still in this world, and so now there are thieves, there are robbers who are trying to steal you back to that lost and condemned flock. Jesus warns us of this in John 10. He said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thieves work to steal you back. Thieves are people. Thieves are even the devil and his demons that attack even your mind. Both of them work on you. They even work through the blessings God has put in your life. They even work through God's word. King David even fell victim to those thieves. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, young David went to King Saul. He told him that God had been with him while he was a shepherd. And so he would be able, by God's help, to defend Israel against a huge warrior named Goliath. David said, Your servant has killed both lion and bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies 
of the living God. David was confident he could defeat Goliath. Not because he was coming against a people, but because he was going against the living God. Because God defends Israel. God defends his people. God had been with David to defeat lions and bears. What could Goliath do against him? And God was with him, and he defeated him. And eventually, David became king of all Israel. Later in life, that confidence was to David's ruin. In his confidence, David ended up committing adultery and even murder. He had betrayed God. He had betrayed his people as a leader. David could slay lions, bears, even huge warriors, but sin still affected him. He still needed to rely on God's forgiveness for God to defend him and his life. And it's so easy for us to read about David, to try and picture what it was like for David to fight a lion with his bare hands, to fight a bear with his bare hands, to defeat the huge Goliath just as a teenage boy. We can want those same kinds of things to happen in our lives. We'd even love it if somebody filmed it, if we went viral from those kinds of things. We want God to defend us in those ways. But see, that's not what made David great. What made David great was God and how God was going to save us through David. David wasn't made king of Israel for his own fame and fortune. David was made king of Israel because God made a promise to him that from his line would come the great shepherd, the great king, Jesus. That's why God defended him. That's why God made him great. Because eventually Jesus was born from David's line. His promise was kept to him. You and I can easily become so sidetracked in our lives. Thieves can easily steal us away from focusing on Jesus to focus on anything else in our lives. Especially right now. If any of you are following somebody that's really good at dealing with taming lions and bears, if you can follow them and you can still remain a follower of Jesus and it doesn't harm your faith at all, fine. But if you're following somebody right now that hurts your faith, stop. Stop following them. And I'll say this too right now. You can follow lots of different people. You can follow those that you like, people that make you laugh. Uh, Again, people that might help you to eat better, people that help you with uh, physical fitness, encourage you to work out, people that help you in your job, that's fine. But in order to figure out who is good in your life, you need to first listen to that voice of your good shepherd. You need to follow Jesus. And his voice is recorded for you in the words of Scripture. The Bible is there for you to reference every day. It again reminds you of that most important need that you have, that you have been saved by God, that your sins are forgiven, that heaven is waiting for you, this endless pasture that will give you life forever, a place of peace and joy, a place of healing. There is no sin there. There is no sickness that we need to fear there. But God is also with you in his word to speak to you, to understand what is good for you in your daily life. When you're in God's Word, it gives you wisdom and understanding so that you can decipher that this is a good thing to follow, a good person to listen to. It allows you to get closer to God and also to see those in your life that are actually ruining your faith, stealing you away from God, wasting your time, leading you down a path that will only hurt you. As a follower of Jesus, you also have followers. Again, we all follow somebody, so you at least have one follower in your life. And again, we follow people to find some benefit, to fulfill some need in our life. Recognize those who follow you and give them Jesus. And for those who follow you, It may never become enough so that you hear somebody say, Congratulations, you've gone viral. But you know that not everything that goes viral is really worth watching. 
especially over the last couple of weeks and months, we've all really understood what it's like to become a follower. We've had to find ways to connect to each other because we can't always be in person. It's made life difficult, and yet there are also blessings. Your phones, your TVs have been filled with lots of different pastors and all different kinds of followers of Jesus who are pointing you to him. Perhaps now more than ever, you have at your fingertips the opportunity to follow more people who will point you to God's grace. But I encourage you to then, as you watch all of those, only follow those that do point you to Jesus and God's true grace for you. Follow those that remind you that it's not your suffering, it's not your hard work, it's not all of your achievements that save you. The pressure to be perfect, to be noticed, to be good enough in God's eyes, even in the eyes of the world, to get into heaven, to make up for your sins is too much for you. You cannot do it. The good news, those under shepherds that are worth following are those that point you to Jesus. Jesus who suffered for you. Jesus whose life of good is now yours. Jesus who laid down his life to save you. The message of Jesus is the greatest message in this world. It is the most viral message we will ever know because Jesus has saved all people. Jesus is not your shepherd for fame or fortune, for any reason for himself. Jesus was your shepherd to save you, to give his life for you, to remind you that he calls each one of you by name. Jesus came to this world so that you may have life and have it to the full. Follow the voice of the shepherd. Follow the voice of Jesus for life. Amen. This time, especially for uh, those gathered here, we would usually sign the connection cards. We won't do that today. Um, instead, I'll take attendance uh, in a different way, and that's fine. For those of you that are uh, watching with us online, you can comment uh, to let us know that you are with us, uh, worshiping with us. And again, for those of you here, I encourage you to check in um, or comment or like this later on. Um, we have set up the offering plates over there, we're not going to pass them around again so that we're not uh, sharing things with each other. Uh, both plates are there, so you can just slip your offering underneath. It's a little windy out here. Uh, for those of you watching online, you can still go to divinepeace.com. Click on the Give tab, and you can uh, give a one-time gift or uh, start giving um, weekly uh, through our online giving. And a final encouragement. Uh, we all have people that follow us. And yes, all of us are followers. For those that follow you, for those that are here with you, share that encouragement of your good shepherd. People do look to you. You are a benefit to other people because, what, uh, because of what God has done for you. Share that message. Share it with those followers. This time we'll continue uh, with the prayer of the church. Again, for the kids at home, time to stop, uh, drop your heads and fold your hands. Same for everyone here. Lord Jesus, great shepherd of the sheep, we give you thanks for providing us with all we need. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Shepherd of all believers, as we walk through this life weary from the attacks of wolves eager to steal our trust in you, shine through the good news of your resurrection. Keep us in the faith until we come to live with you in heaven. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, who, lead, who led Joseph like a flock. You who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. Shepherd of the young, protect and provide for the young among us with faithful parents, kind friends, and Christian examples, that they grow up in, safe in your arms and ready to share your grace with the next generation. He tends his flock like a shepherd, he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Isaiah 40. 
shepherd of the scattered. Bring back those who have fallen away, who have been driven away from your church. Renew their hope in you, and lighten the burdens weighing down their hearts. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from all the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. Ezekiel 34. Almighty God, take all we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. Bless and keep all those who are sick and suffering. We ask that you would especially be with those hospitalized. Melvin, Michelle Sholock's cousin's husband, recently diagnosed with non-Hodgkinson's lymphoma. Be with him as he is in the hospital now, uh, working with aggressive chemo treatments and keep him protected from the virus. Also be with their family. Uh, it's very hard on him. Uh, they have a two-year-old at home. Be with Lois Herring, the mother of Pastor Herring, who fell and fractured her back. We pray that she will uh, do well in rehab. Continue to be with Lois, Warren Olson's mother, who is in a nursing home in poor health. Guide and shepherd her, remind her that her name is known by her Savior Jesus, and heaven is hers. Continue to be with Benj, Sylvia's grandson. We're praying for answers and healing as he continues to experience seizures. With Charlie, Michelle Sholock's biological father, who is in poor health. Joseph Long, Michelle's adoptive father, who is unable to be visited right now is a nursing home, who is hurting uh, both physically and in his faith. Be with Diane Barr, neighbor of the Dresdens, who continues to recover at home from the virus and who lost her husband to the virus. Be with all those battling cancer, Gwen Mon and Jill Carpenter, Nicole Hagen and Terry Washick, Joanne Rainey and Ken Connor, Charlie Williams, Emily and Valerie Compton. We continue also to pray for all healthcare workers, for all first responders, keep them safe, be with them and their families during these times of separation and uh, anxiety and fear. Uh, let us all live by faith and protect and heal um, each of us, our nation and this world. And now, hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Lord, you called us away from hopeless wandering to follow your voice of life. Now hear us as we join to pray together as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now a blessing from Hebrews chapter 13. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning we're going to close our service with two hymns. First we'll sing hymn 432, I am Jesus, little lamb. Then we'll close with hymn 360, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. For this next hymn, we're going to be using a Koine soundtrack, and the endings of each verses are a little slower, so we will try our best to lead you guys through it.
shepherd.